In this video, you're going to learn about PE diagrams, potential energy diagrams, what they are, and what you need to know to answer questions related to potential energy diagrams correctly. So let's get started. First of all, what are potential energy diagrams? Well, you should have learned already that all substances, that's elements or compounds, have stored energy. Stored energy in science is known as potential energy. And when we have a reaction, we always have reactants going to products. And that change is known as the system. It's what we're focusing our, um, our attention on and everything else in the universe is known as the surroundings. Well, when it comes to a potential energy diagram, that is plotted out what is going on with the stored energy as a reaction progresses. So in the example here that you see, we have A plus B yielding C plus D. And we're starting here at an energy of 40 kilojoules. And by the time we get to the products here, C plus D, we're down to 20. So the energy dropped. So what does that mean? That means that this is an exothermic reaction. For exothermic reactions, all right, or potential energy, it's known as heat of reaction, also enthalpy or delta H. Delta H on a potential energy diagram, you're going to look at the difference, right, where we start, C plus D. Here, my 20 minus 40 which means I'm going to end up with a negative 20 kilojoules. The negative sign tells me it's an exothermic reaction. Now, there's some other information here that you need to know. So the diagram itself, I like to break up into thirds. In other words, if I put a line down here, line here okay, where I start and where I end, tells me whether it's exothermic or endothermic, but the middle, this in the middle, is telling me how much energy is required to get the reaction started, even in the case of an exothermic reaction where energy is released. So the very top of any potential energy diagram, we have what's known as the activated complex. Activated complex means that I have bonds breaking of my reactants at the same time I have bonds starting to form of my products. And if you're asked about the potential energy of the activated complex, then we're looking at the line here from zero all the way up to the top. Okay, so in other words, it would be a Hundred kilojoules. If you're asked about the potential energy of my reactants, then again, it's a line that we're starting from the axes all the way up to where it hits the reactants, which is 40 in this case. And for my products, it's from the axes to 20. Now, the final thing that you have to know about is how to figure out the activation energy. So forward reaction means that I got, in this case, A plus B going to C plus D. And again, this is the energy that's required to get this reaction started. And we're not starting at zero, we're starting at 40, and we're going up to 100. So the activation energy of the forward reaction was 60 kilojoules. If we were ever asked about the reverse reaction, then again, it's where I'm starting, which is 20 now for C plus D and going up to 100. So in the opposite direction, it would be 80 kilojoules. Well, let's take a look at the only other option for potential energy diagrams which of course would be an endothermic reaction. So I just happen to have one. 
Let me scroll this up. Hold on one sec. There we go. All right. So here we have an endothermic reaction. Well, how do I know that? Well, look at where I'm starting and where I'm ending. Once again, it might be easier if you break up your potential energy diagram into thirds. Where I'm starting is at 50. Nice line there. Let's try that again. All right, here's my thirds. All right. And I'm starting here at 50 and I'm ending at 100. So my delta H is final minus initial or products minus reactants, 100 minus 50, which would be 50 kilojoules in this case, and it's a positive value. This is an endothermic reaction. Okay, so once again, the very top of a potential energy diagram, that's where my activated complex is. When I'm looking for potential energy of anything, I'm gonna start at the zero or the x-axis, and I'm gonna make a mess here, and I'm gonna go right up to the top. Okay, in this case, for the activated complex, it's 250 kilojoules. The potential energy of my reactants is 50, and the potential energy of my products is 100. And remember, delta H is in between. Finally, for activation energy, if we're not starting at zero, we're starting from 50 and we're going up to 250. So it would be 200 in the forward direction and the activation energy in the reverse would be going from 100, sorry about that again, 100 to 250, so 150 in the reverse. Now it's your turn. What I'd like you to do is figure out whether it's an endothermic or exothermic potential energy diagrams, and then I'd like you to figure out what you each of these arrows represent as far as values on the diagram. So pause the video and come on back for some answers. Okay, we are back. Let's go with number one. So the arrow for number one, notice I'm starting here at the bottom and I'm going up to where my reactants are. So that's for number one, the potential energy of my reactants. For number two, again, I'm starting here at zero, going all the way up to the top. So that's the potential energy of the activated complex. All righty. Well, let's take a look. For number three, that's interesting, and this is what will happen on a standardized test. This arrow is starting here. Let me go ahead and, right, it's here. So it's all the way across, all the way up to here. Now, don't let it fool you that the arrow is here. I'm starting at my reactance line and I'm going up to the activated complex. So that is the activation energy of the forward reaction. So it's a little tricky when you're dealing with arrows and arrows representing different values because these test writers will try to put the arrows in places that make it difficult for students to understand. All right, and finally, well, not finally, we've got two more questions to answer. Let me erase all this. For number four, for number four, we're dealing with the reading off of the graph or an arrow that's here at my products and my reactants. Sure enough, that is my enthalpy or delta H. And again, this is an arrow that a lot of times will travel. You're gonna see it in different places back and forth. Okay, the final question I had asked you was, is this an endo or an exothermic reaction? Well, my reactants are higher in energy than my products. So what does that mean? That means energy was lost to the surroundings, and this is an exothermic reaction. I hope this helps. Keep working hard. 
going over questions, and good luck. And if you don't mind hitting the like button, that would be greatly appreciated because that lets me know that I'm helping you out with some chemistry.